Well, uh, we're going to practice um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and get the players off uh, Thursday, Friday, and um, Saturday, and get back to work on Sunday. And coaches will get out uh, recruiting on um, Thursday and Friday. What do you think about the timing of having it this late in the season? Um, I think we would have liked to have it um, a little earlier. Uh, we were pretty beat up football team, kind of like others, but um, um, I know our guys are, ex I shouldn't say necessarily excited, but they feel better about getting their, their bodies back right and, and, and get ready for a, a two game season and, and to regroup, reset and get rolling again. Coach, how, how do you make sure that, you know, team's spirit is still high after, after a pretty deflating loss to a rival like that? Um, you turn on the film and you look at the things that you did wrong and, and you be honest with yourself. I think uh, that's the key is being honest with yourself. And if everybody's honest with yourself, um, there's no need to put your head down and, and, and go in a hole. You know, you, you get excited about coming back and, and working your tail off to make things right. And, and our football team still have a lot to play for. You know, we um, you kind of look at the season. It's kind of like we've been through hell and back. You know, we dealt with smoke dealt with injuries, a losing streak, and uh, we still have an opportunity to, um, to um, W win totals, you know, so we have so much we have to play for. So if you if you any kind of competitor, you'll be excited about it and willing to work your tail off to, to make sure that we get those things. Is this like a, a reset to the season with a bye week, two home games, guys coming back from injury just healing up a little bit? Yeah, uh, I, I look at it kind of that way now with, with two games left and like I say a lot, still a lot to play for um, we got to reset get ourselves back healthy and, and uh, work on the fundamentals and, and technique of doing things the right way and, and seeing if we can finish strong here at home I know you said you don't talk about full eligibility or haven't yet with the team but just in terms of you know kind of what there is to play for how, how do you address that to the team then um, I, I got like I said a minute ago um, still have a lot to play for. We still have a chance to, to uh, uh, double our win totals uh, from a year ago. And, and um, the only way you can do that, you got to become bowl eligible. You got to win these next two ball games in order to do those things. So um, our guys know what it's, what's at stake. And, and uh, we got to play our tails off and we got to coach our tails off, especially for these seniors to make sure that they leave here the right way saying that there are certain schemes that uh, that you'll focus on in, in this week and getting ready for Arizona next week. But within those schemes, um, how much do you add or how much do you focus on getting uh, using plays for Braxton to move sideline to sideline with the pocket moving in and from? He had a couple plays where he played really well looking downfield and he moved the ball. Um, we just got to get better. We got to complete some passes uh, the best way we can, whether that's sprint out, which we tried that, and we got a sack. Um, um, or if it's drop back and, and throw the ball, but whatever we have to do to be able to throw the football, we got to find a way to do that consistent enough and, and efficient enough um, so us, so we can uh, put some points on the board. I think at the end of the day, whatever it takes to, to put points on the board, that's what we have to be able to do. How was you guys can't keep uh, the quick switch recruiting, but how do you feel like it's, it's going now that your staff's about to, to go on the road and do things? Our uh, recruiting is going well as well. It, as it can be right now, um, you know, it never stops and it never ends until um, you, you sign them all, but it's, it's going well. We we talked to all our guys and they're feeling good and still excited about being a duck and um, it'd be good for our guys to get out on the road now and, and get out to, to watch some of the guys play play some ball. So um, I think recruiting is going really well. Coach, that big signing from the day period, does that kind of change things, the way you approach the way you're recruiting right at this point in the season? Uh -huh. Not necessarily, you know. Again, we we recruit every single day, all day, and we go at it hard, and and um, we got to go up even harder now um, here as we get close towards the end of the season. Um, and our guys got to go out and again continue to build those relationships and continue to sell your message and your vision of what you want from this football program. And and um, again, we do it every day, so. Uh, those relationships are being built, and those guys are excited about coming here and helping us turn this program around. Do you get a sense that most prospects will sign in December? Or do you think a lot of them will just continue to wait until February? Um, I hope they all. I mean, if they say they commit it, then and, uh, you 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 hope they all sign. And if they don't, then they're not committed. So um, 
our intention is to sign all of our guys that's committed and and um, again they want to be a part of this and what we're building and um, that's what we intend to happen and again I don't know what it's like at other places but that's what we want here. Why are you pause on that? <laughs> he wasn't really confident with that one. <laughs> yep. So a date right before the signing day period, you feel like there may, may be some tweaking that needs to happen because some schools are preparing for a bowl while other schools are, are getting that last recruiting weekend before the signing period? Um, I don't know how much tweaking you can do. You know, it's always something that comes up. Um, I'm, I'm tired of all the tweaks, to be honest with you. You know, you just, I mean, it's, it'll be different and um, for a lot of teams, but I don't think it will necessarily affect whether or not a kid signed. You know, we still have some time to get out and see them and, and, and do the home visit during the contact period, I think. Now, from that standpoint, you have to maneuver around some things to be able to get there. But um, they always have bowl games, and you've still been able to do the contact part of it. So we're still going to be able to get out and see our guys. And, and again, hopefully we sign all of our commits and uh, have a, a, a good Christmas present with them all. Khalil Tate kind of came out of the scene somewhat out of nowhere in October. Do you feel like you need all 14 days to get ready for that guy? Absolutely. He's the real deal. Holy field. The kid can play some football. Uh, and uh, we're going to need every single day we have to uh, prepare for him and his football team. Uh, um, a good football team, put up a lot of points, and, and the kid is uh, really good with the football in his hands. So we got to get healed. We got to be sharp. And uh, we got to play lights out. Does that kind of surprise you? I mean, he was like the backup until their starter got hurt that he just, I mean, a backup came on and is basically lighting up college football like that? Um, I wouldn't necessarily say surprised. I mean, he, he's he been pretty good for a while. Uh, we just hadn't seen him um, in action yet, you know. Um, I don't think anybody just become good all of a sudden. He's, he's a pretty talented kid, and um, it's just amazing how some things work, you know. The good Lord works in mysterious ways, and and it worked out well for him. But I think it's a learning lesson for a lot of guys to always be ready for the, that opportunity. You never know when it comes. And and he's a young man that's taking advantage of his opportunity. Coach, I'm working on a story about the connection here between the Oregon coaching staff and Sheldon football. In terms of your son, Willie Jr., how has he handled the transition to a new school, new coaches, new teammates, and all that? Oh, good. Will, Will's a, a great kid. Um, he gets along with everybody. I never thought he'll uh, have any trouble adjusting. Uh, he Again, he get along with everybody. Um, and um, he's enjoying Sheldon, he's enjoying Eugene, and um, he's met a lot of friends. Um, got him a girlfriend. <laughs> um, but he's staying focused, and, um, but he, he's enjoying it. Have you had a chance to go out and see Sheldon play so far this year? Um, I, I have, I've been able to watch some of his games and um, I get an opportunity to go watch him play this Friday. So. I'm excited about that. What's his best attribute as, as a football player? He's a pretty good athlete, um, smart kid. He understands the game, and um, he's a heck of a talent, you know, and uh, got to put some more muscles on his bones. But um, but he's bigger than I was at this time in high school, so I think he'll be all right. As a football coach, what's the one area you think that he can improve on the most? Or just a sophomore, so a lot of time. Now. Uh, I think big thing for Will now is just to get stronger. For him to get stronger, he really understands the game, and uh, like I say, he can—he's really good with the ball in his hand. You know, just getting bigger and stronger to be able to protect himself, and um, and just keep learning. In which he—he's watching football all day, every day. We can't even have conversation because he's watching football, which is a good thing, you know. But um, um, he's gonna be fine. I think he's gonna be one heck of a football player.